Scott, Nesbitt and their four young companions are walking to Sydney in the hope of finding a new life. And their journey is going to end in a disaster. Part of the problem is the men don't have a lot of money and they would hope to work along the way to be able to buy food and find a place to stay. But there was a drought in the winter of 1879 and there's not a lot of work to be had. They're forced to sell clothing they don't need to help buy food. And living on koala meat, damper and tea is a pretty miserable sort of an existence. They hear of a place called Wanton Badgering and it's there the station owner is supposed to have a bit of sympathy for these passing travellers and they hope to find work when they get there and a place to stay. But what they don't realise is the original owner has passed away. After 25 years of owning the place, the new owners are not very sympathetic to passing travellers at all. The men arrive here at Wanton Badgery Station one evening of November 1879 and they see the manager about the opportunity for some work and he says no and asks them to leave the property. They go and live in the bush for a couple of days and it's cold and it's wet and they come back and see the owner McDonald and McDonald says no to the opportunity as work as well. So they ask if they could use one of the outbuildings that had not been occupied to stay out of the weather. McDonald says no to that request and orders them off the property. And to quote Scott, the voice of hunger will overcome the voice of reason. And in that desperate hour, they'll go back to the Wanton Badgery homestead and take everybody hostage. The men are here for about two days and anybody who visits the homestead will be taken hostage. Anybody who passes by on this track will be taken hostage. On the first day, Scott decides to steal McDonald's prize filly to go into the Wanton Badgery to the Australian Arms Hotel. But he can't control this filly, it's too flighty for him. And in frustration, he shoots it with a Colt revolver. It's worth noting in this story. He steals another horse, goes into the Australian Arms Hotel, takes all the patrons, including the publican hostage, and returns to the homestead with a large quantity of alcohol and his hostages. Now, while he was away, a young boy has escaped and rode bareback to Wagga to raise the alarm. But I don't know what Scott was thinking. At the end of the second day, he has nearly 40 people held up at the homestead, locked in various rooms, including the publican. Now, this is a small community, and you think those people weren't going to be missed? The publican certainly was. Early the next morning, about 4 a.m., the troopers arrived from Wagga and they approach the homestead, but Scott's men are standing good vigil and Scott comes out on the veranda and fires a single shot from a rifle. It passes between two of the troopers. They return fire. Scott retreats back into the homestead and gives the order, all fire, and all six of the bushrangers will open up on the troopers. There's a firefight that goes on for several hours, but the troopers can't make an advance they're forced to retreat to a neighbouring property to await reinforcements from Gundagai and to acquire some fresh horses. Reinforcements arrive from Gundagai. There are five troopers and four railway workers and they're heavily armed and under the leadership of Senior Sergeant Carroll. And they head straight back to Wanton Badgery Homestead. But Scott and the gang have slipped away. Carroll and his men track him to the north and they catch up with him at a place called McGlebe's Hut. They've taken Edmund McGlebe as hostage, so the troopers approach within 250 metres of the house and they call for Scott and the men to surrender. But they yell back they'd rather fight. It's then young Gus Winicky, he's hiding near a tree line and he dashes back and is shot and mortally wounded by the police. He's 15 years old. Then the police will spend the next three or four hours advancing from tree to tree under heavy fire from the gang and they're able to flush Scott back into a detached building behind the house. It's there where the police will make a brave and dangerous move. They'll storm the building and it's there Senior Constable Edward Webb Bowen was shot in the throat. It takes him five days to die an agonising death but they're able to bring that siege to an end. When they storm the building they find one of the bushrangers 
with a bullet wound to the arm. Nesbitt is mortally wounded and dying with Scott cradled over his body and crying like a child. He's lost his best mate. What they don't know is Tom, young Tom Rogan is still hiding in the house under Edward McGlebe's bed, but he'll be found the next day and the four will be dispatched to Gundagai for processing and then sent to Darlinghurst Prison in Sydney for trial. Three.